Hundreds of thousands of protesters rallied around gun control in March for our lives rallies in Washington and across the country and around the world. President Trump did not personally weigh in yesterday while he was at Mar-a-Lago, which is just a 40-minute drive from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Trump instead now spending over 100 days of his presidency at his own golf properties, Mar-a-Lago being one. Despite the president's silence, the resounding call for gun control was this. I represent the African-American women who are victims of gun violence, who are simply statistics instead of vibrant, beautiful girls at full of potential. For far too long, these names, these black girls and women, have been just numbers. I'm here to say, never again for those girls, too. We are going to make this the voting issue. To those politicians supported by the NRA that allow the continued slaughter of our children and our future, I say get your resumes ready. Your thoughts and prayers don't shield the bullets you're enabling the purchase of with your greed and manipulation. And those of us who are legal and responsible American citizen gun owners, it's time to join hands. It's time to get in the arena. It's time to step up to the line and help heal our country. No one could believe that there were bodies in that building waiting to be identified for over a day. Six minutes and 20 seconds with an AR-15, and my friend Carmen would never complain to me about piano practice. Aaron Feist would never call Kira Miss Sunshine. Alex Schachter would never walk into school with his brother Ryan. So one last final plug, get out there and vote. Joining us now is the father of Elena Petty, who was just 14 years old when she was gunned down in Parkland, one of the 17. Uh, Ryan, thank you for joining us right now, and you have been an amazing voice of maintaining a positive note amongst great difficulty uh, after Parkland. And as you were watching and listened to just now some of what was said yesterday in the March for Our Lives uh, movement that was happening all around the world, did you hear your daughter's voice? Well, not exactly. I mean, I, I, I heard the call for an end to school violence, and that resonates with me. That would resonate with my daughter also. As you have been out speaking and offering solutions, where do you stand right now in terms of what you think might be the next step? Uh, as we all know, in Florida, there were some changes in laws regarding guns. One, in increasing the age to 21 before you can buy, for instance, in a three-day waiting period. Yeah, we, uh, we did some things in Florida that hadn't been done in 22 years. Um, new firearms regulations. We did it though by building on common ground. What I heard in the, in the segment just immediately preceding was a lot of very hyper-partisan and charged rhetoric um, that I don't, I don't believe is helpful uh, in, in trying to move these issues forward. We all agree that we want school violence to stop. We all agree we want our children and our teachers to be safe in school. So the question is how do we achieve that? Right. Um, I'm not sure uh, impugning the motives and, uh, of the other side is, is actually the best way to move forward. I think the legislative victories that we've had in the last five weeks, we've passed three substantive uh, school safety right. and uh, gun violence regulation, or, uh, new laws uh, in, the, in the past five weeks. I think we've gotten more done uh, in five weeks than the last 15 years, but we've done it by building on common beliefs and common ground. The March for Our Lives uh, movement, and you said you didn't quite hear your daughter's voice uh, in what was said. W were you supportive of what happened yesterday? Well, I, I love the passion. I love the attention that's being drawn to the issue. Um, and so I commend uh, all those that participated for, for coming together to try to find ways to get this to stop. What I, what I think we need to do, though, is figure out what are the four, five, six, ten things we agree on, get those things done, and then we can have the, uh, the debate about the more controversial aspects later. Some have said that it was politically motivated, that the funding was in question. Do you agree with those criticisms of what happened yesterday? That the, the march, That's just correct. to make sure I understand the question, right. the, the uh -huh. march was politically motivated? That's right. Uh, I, I saw some politically uh, partisan signs and issues. I don't know I don't know whether the march organizers were pol politically motivated or how they're motivated. I don't know much about the march, uh, to be honest. We, um, 
I, I did talk to the organizers a bit uh, about participating. I chose not to. Uh, my family chose not to. Um, just because we were afraid that, uh, um, you know, that we would, we would create a, a rift between the, the legislators that we need to build common ground with. And I, I've spoken to legislators on both sides um, of the issue, both in Florida and in Washington, D.C., uh -huh. And there's a lot we agree on. There's a lot more we agree on than we disagree on. Very quickly, who do you see on both sides as the deal makers here then? Well, as an example, the family, so the 17 families of the victims, we came together when we wrote, uh, we wrote a letter to Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer, to um, um, Senator McConnell, Speaker Ryan, and uh, Representative Pelosi asking them to pass the Stop School Violence Act and the Fix Nix bill uh, to include those in the omnibus spending bill that was just passed and signed into law by President Trump last week. Those are the those are just just an example of a very bipartisan list of legislators that we've met and, and, and talked with. All right, thank you for your positivity, uh, Ryan Petty. As you, I know, uh, do mourn the loss of your daughter, uh, but yet remain so uh, forward and positive in, in, in the steps that can be done to fix this problem of violence in schools. So thank you so much. Thank you.